Okay, so now we can start texturing some of the new models that we have. I've created a scene here that just has some of the new models, so it's a little bit easier to work uh, with them. It'll be less cluttered, and we can start creating some of the materials here. Um, so what I'm going to do is let's go ahead and work on the building. We're going to kind of create a concrete uh, using projection textures. So since we're using Arnold, I'm going to go ahead and start by creating a standard AI standard surface material. And then let's just clear the other ones out and frame that. So now as well, I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn on a light dome that I have here. This is just kind of a basic um, HDRI that's in a in a parking lot in the daytime so we can at least get a test render going. So let's uh, get a test render here just to see what things are going to kind of look like, make sure the lighting's okay before we put any textures on anything. Okay, so let's make sure that we have the Arnold renderer selected here for our renderer. I'm going to switch over to GPU rendering since we are using the NVIDIA RTX 4090 GPU. We might as well take advantage of that. Uh, we can get much faster speeds with the GPU renderer now. Let's go ahead and go back here and turn on adaptive sampling. So this will, we can lower this maybe a little bit. So the adaptive sampling will increase the number of samples just in the areas that we need it. Uh, so I'll keep the camera AA samples at three, and then I'm going to use the max ones at 15 just for now since we're testing. So let's check our resolution and let's lower this a little bit just for testing as well. I'm gonna lower it to, HD vertical. Okay, so let's go ahead and do a quick test here. Let's swing the light around a little bit here so that we get a little bit of this side in the sun here. I'm going to swing it around on the Y rotation here. So let's go ahead and start creating our concrete material here. So we can call this Concrete. Okay, so now that we have our material, what we're going to do is use triplanar projections to create the concrete texture here. So we can use two different concrete textures and then blend them together so that we kind of hide any repeating texture that we might have. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is in the color, let's go ahead and create a new triplanar that's going to be under texture and then AI tri triplanar here. And then in the triplanar, we can bind our image, our file, and I'm going to copy and paste in our image here that we're using. It's just a concrete texture. I can show you what it looks like here. So it's kind of a basic texture here um, with just a little bit of variation. And then Let's go ahead and render. Let's go ahead and render this and see how that looks so far. Oh, before we do that, though, we do need to assign the texture there. So let's go ahead and assign the concrete onto it. Okay, nice. So we've got so we've got the texture at least showing up. So it's a triplanar projection. So it's going to project from all the different sides. So I don't really need to worry too much about um, the UVs or anything like that. So let's go ahead and add our other texture because um, if we wanted to get more detail, we might start to see things repeating a little bit. Like you might be able to see some of the texture kind of repeating across here. Um, we're going to have really good resolution here, um, but you're going to start to see things repeat. So what we're going to do is let's go ahead and add another triplanar here. So what I'm going to do is unbind this for right now. And then let's go ahead and add our blend material. So let's, you can either search for it here or we can, if we hit tab, we can search and look for blend. We're going to blend colors. 
to blend them to mask between these two textures, let's go ahead and use an AI cell noise. And we can set, let's set it to cell so that we can see what's going on. And then we can bind, just as a test, let's just bind the color into the base material color so that we can render this and check out the scale and how it's gonna look first. Okay, well, let's go ahead and try this then. So now that we have our noise, what, let's go ahead and plug in one of the channels here into the blender side. So the blender will only take a, an alpha uh, or a single channel, black and white. So we don't need uh, the full color to go out. We can just choose one of the one of the color channels there. And then we'll go out into the base color. Okay, so now we're getting a mix of these two colors right now. So you can see right now we just have plugged in uh, red and blue and we're getting kind of a mix throughout here. So this will hopefully kind of blend some of the different, uh, the two textures that we're gonna use. So let's go ahead and plug in our out color here into the first color. Okay, and then let's create a new triplanar for the second color. Okay, so we've got this second color, our second triplanar, and then let's put a file node on it. And then, okay, so we've got just kind of a, a second kind of a plaster here that's like smoother. So we'll load that. So now we're getting this second texture in here, which is just adding a bit of an area that's smoother so that it, there's just not detail everywhere so that, and so that we hide a little bit of the repeating texture as well. So now let's go ahead and add some roughness and a normal map so that we kind of get rid of the, the sheen here. Okay, so one thing I forgot to do here is we need to set the correct color space of these Textures coming in by default, it comes in at sRGB. This, because this is a roughness map, we can just bring it in as a raw color space because we don't need we don't need that to come in uh, with an applied gamma or anything. And then we also need to turn on alpha's illuminance, and then we can go ahead and try to re-render and see what we're getting here. Okay, so that's looking good. May, the scale might be still a little bit too big, but we can adjust that. And it might still be a little bit shiny as well. So let's make a few adjustments here. Okay, so that's how to kind of create a quick uh, concrete material using triplanar projections and blending them together so that we get rid of some of the repeating textures. But for now, I'm gonna go ahead and leave this and move on to at least getting a first pass of some of the other textures. Okay, now we can start building our neon material for all the neon lights and all the tubes and things like that. So we're gonna start by making a facing ratio and then a blend color. We're gonna create this as a procedural material so that we don't have to create any painted textures or anything like that. The facing ratio will allow us to get a nice roll off at the edge of the tubes. So anywhere that is facing towards the camera, we're gonna have the A color, and then anywhere at the 90 degree incident angle from the camera and the surface, we're gonna get the B color. Um, so I can put in two different colors here, setting, uh, setting the first one to like a lighter kind of a pink, since it's like the hot core, and then the outer color can be a deeper, more saturated kind of pink purple. Then we can play with the bias and gain a little bit to control how much roll off we see and how much uh, fall off there is there. Um, I'll go ahead and turn off the lights just so we can see things a little bit better here. And then we can tweak some of the settings a little bit more. So then what I'm also gonna do is create a mesh light by combining all these surfaces so I duplicate them and then I'm gonna merge them together into just one mesh and then I can make that mesh a uh, mesh light in Arnold and the mesh light is good because we can add a brighter intensity to the light without adding a ton more samples the 
emission is going to add a lot of samples and it's not going to be as efficient as using the mesh light. So in this case, I'm going to do both. I'm going to add the mesh light, which the mesh light is going to have like a really saturated color and that's going to add uh, light to the scene. It's going to light the area around it. And then the emission will have the blend normal facing ratio material that we set up to give a little bit more detail. So I'm also going to go ahead and turn on visible in camera so that we can actually see the light so it becomes a hotter core and that's basically our neon setup so then we can start to copy that around the different materials the nice thing is we don't have to worry about the uvs we just can change the colors and create different shaders for different colors that we want and then just assign it to the different tubes that we have so here you can see on the left side on the wall, you can see it's adding a nice amount of light over there. That's the mesh light, but we're still getting like a nice hot core. So this setup is nice because you can balance the amount of light that you're outputting versus how bright those neon tubes are. So you can get still nice saturation so it doesn't get completely blown out white. Okay, so now let's do a little bit of new textures for the signs that we're gonna create for this piece. The first one is going to be called cassette in Japanese here. So I'm going to just kind of scale this up a little bit here and center it. And then I'm going to just start to create the look of the sign or at least the look of the, the lettering here, doing some kind of outlines based on some uh, reference that I've seen with some of the Japanese signs. A lot of them have like these uh, multiple borders and different colors and things like that is kind of cool to accent the different fonts and things like that. So I'll start by creating a stroke that outlines this lettering. I'll do it in kind of like a dark blue here and then I'm going to expand that selection from there and fill that with white kind of in the background to create another kind of a stroke. And then I'm going to add a new stroke to this outline here as well. So we kind of have this, so we kind of have multiple strokes and different outlines to kind of emphasize the lettering. And then I'm just going to paint in a little bit of light behind the letters here. Like there's kind of like the LEDs are kind of centered inside of the sign and then it falls off towards the edges. And then let's just go ahead and add a little bit of extra text around here. So below here, I'm just going to write mixtape in Japanese again. And then I'm going to do a similar kind of a border kind of setup to the other one, but just simplified a little bit here so that because the text is smaller. Also, a different way to do that back white outline is to use a drop shadow, but then you can harden the edge so it looks like another outline. And then I'm also going to create another word here, purple rain in Japanese. I want to tie this word purple rain into one of the albums that we're going to do when we set dress some of the some of the work because we're creating the record store. I'm going to put some albums outside of the store and so this might be a nice little Easter egg to tie the words in here to the album down below. Um, and then let's add just a little bit of like a uh, record cassette kind of play buttons here. Give it a little bit more of a retro feel. And then I'm going to create a second sign here. This one is going to be called Game Store in Japanese. And because a lot of my artwork is centered around nostalgia and retro themes, I'm going to add some retro kind of colors and shapes here across the top that kind of represent some of like those kind of old style kind of games, those 80s kind of cassette kind of games that you'd plug into an Atari and things like that. Okay, so now that we have all the textures created, I'm just going to go ahead and assign these textures to our new signs in the 3D scene. And then we're ready to move on to the next section. Okay, so that wraps up this video for texturing and shading. In the next video, we're going to do a little bit of animation to create some ambient kind of movements in the scene. So let's go ahead and I'll see you guys in the next video.